Good evening, Keen. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight. I think a private institution would do a much better job. I don't think that I need to ask permission to drive on the road. For me, my goal is to live a free life. So you can ask for Go inside. You'll be arrested. Thank you for watching Free Keen TV. I'm your anchor, Heike Corser. For tonight's show, we will be taking a look at an event that took place this past Friday in Plymouth, New Hampshire. Former New Hampshire police officer Bradley Jardis and former active duty Army Tommy Mozingo put out a press release stating that they intend to openly carry rifles on Plymouth State Campus. In this next video, a demo from Cop Block filmed a pre-event interview, and following that is a recap of the state of New Hampshire's response to the press release as heard on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, it's Damo. I'm here in New Hampshire with Brad Jardis, and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself first, and then about some activism he's got planned later this week. So tell the guys a little bit about yourself. Well, um, my name is Brad Jardis, and I, I've been a resident of New Hampshire my entire life. I was a police officer here in the state for 11 years. Um, once the Free State Project um, started to take shape and hold, um, I started getting involved in liberty activism, and um, I left law enforcement. Not because I don't believe in it, but it's I just don't believe in victimless law enforcement. So I've been putting my efforts towards uh, trying freedom in the state and working with great activists like Ademo. And you got something special coming up this Friday, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, this Friday I'm going to be uh, doing an informational outreach with a friend of mine, Tommy Mazingo. Um, we're going to be going to the Plymouth State University, and we're going to be ha um, handing out information to students, and we're going to be carrying firearms. And the reason why we're doing this is for a long time, the state of New Hampshire, uh, specifically the university system, has been lying to, uh, to students and visitors of campuses by enacting regulations that they have no authority to enforce. If you read the New Hampshire law, specifically 159.26, it's what's called the Firearms and Knife uh, Preemption Law. And what the law does is it says that no political subdivision of the state of New Hampshire has the authority to regulate firearms or knives. And the university system of New Hampshire is a political subdivision. So for those who might not know, just give the layman's term of a political subdivision. Sure. A, a political subdivision is something like uh, a school district, a town, a city. Um, it's essentially, um, like the name in, uh, implies, uh, it, um, it is a subdivision of the state of New Hampshire. None of these schools, because they are part of the university system of New Hampshire, have the authority to tell students or visitors that they cannot arm themselves with knives or firearms for self-defense if they so choose. They've been breaking the law for years by having these regulations, and by doing so, they're telling uh, young adults that they have no right to possess a gun or a knife to defend themselves if they're violently attacked. You know, it's understandable that some people may have differing opinions on whether or not it's suitable in an educational setting to have a firearm. That's okay. I mean, people can disagree about that. You know, this is, this is all about empowering people to be able to protect their own safety. So, but ultimately, wouldn't you th say the goal is to have people open carrying in, these, in the schools? Sure, yeah. In my experience as a police officer, if, if, if all the good people of the world were to carry firearms, all the bad people would be out of business overnight. Because I tell you right now, although I'm not a police officer anymore, if I was carrying a firearm walking down the street and I saw someone getting violently attacked, you better believe that I would do something about it quickly. And, you know, I mean, what we're encouraging is responsible firearm ownership, responsible firearm safety practices, and that's why we want to offer a free class to people so we can train them uh, in responsible firearm ownership and ultimately to make the community safer. Take us to that day, if, if today were Friday or in your mind, what do you hope to happen? You show up at 9 a.m., firearms and, and almost as dangerous materials in hand. Right, right. Um, wh what we hope happens is that they don't do anything. We hope that they respect the state law, and we hope that ultimately the word gets out uh, to students so they realize that they have the right under state law to uh, possess a firearm or a knife uh, to defend themselves if they're attacked. Because this is public property subsidized by taxpayers. I would never in my, in my, ever consider going to Dartmouth or to some private college and infringing on their property rights. But this is property that belongs to the people because it is a political subdivision of the state. And accordingly, 
um, the, the university system is, uh, is basically contemptuous towards the New Hampshire General Court who has said you cannot enact any firearm regulations unless we say so. And they have never said so anywhere. That's great. Well, from Brad, uh, cop turned activist and uh, now pushing back a little bit. Uh, again, hopefully uh, <laughs> things go well and we'll be there. So stay tuned. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. The protest that's scheduled for tomorrow morning bright and early at uh, Plymouth State University in New Hampshire has stirred up on my uh, quite a bit of controversy. The uh, some controversy. The Concord Monitor, for instance, a newspaper, has picked up a story. They've been interviewing Brad. He got an interview on WMUR. The school officials had contacted Brad and attempted to negotiate with him to get him to not carry the gun. He ended up negotiating with them to some extent, and some people disagree with this particular tactic. Uh, some say that he sh- never should have talked to them in the first place. But he negotiated some, you know, to like keep trigger locks in the guns or something like that. And the court today issued an order, what they call a temporary restraining order. And this man in the robe is basically saying that Brad Jardis and Tommy Mazingo, the two individuals that we're talking about here, and their officers, agents, servants, employees, and attorneys, and any person acting in active concert and participation with them are enjoined, meaning prohibited, from carrying firearms or any other weapons prohibited by the firearms policy on the university. But he also says Bradley Jardis and Tommy Mazingo are ordered to post a copy of the temporary restraining order that I'm reading – On the blog slash website, www.freekeen.com. So in his order, he's telling Brad and Tommy, who doesn't even have an account at Freekeen, he's not one of our bloggers, while Brad is, because Freekeen's been part of this. This is where Brad posted his press release. This is where all the, you know, the information about this event has kind of come out of. That's essentially what he's doing. He's telling Brad that you have to do as I say. You have to speak as I tell you to speak making, where I tell you to speak it. He's making him a slave. I mean, they actually- Yeah, good evening, guys. Uh, um, I think what's happening here um, is an excellent reason why everyone needs to move to New Hampshire. And what's going on is the government has been called out for doing something that they don't have the power to do. And because they got called out for it, they went to the court who basically said, okay, if you do any of this stuff, it's now criminal contempt. This is what legislating from the bench is. Look, in New Hampshire, there is a law, and it's, uh, you can find it if you type in 159 colon 26. And what it says... So what are your plans for tomorrow morning if you want to reveal those to, to us? All right, well, the, it, it is very apparent that the state wants to play games about what the rules are, so I'm willing to play back. So I'm going to make a, a very carefully worded statement. Uh, tomorrow, Tommy Mazingo and I will not be carrying rifles to the campus. This next video is from the day of the event and features footage from freeagents.com. Good. Hi, I'm recording for the Shire Free Press. Oh, sure. Just wondering if you'd like to comment on your sign here. Um, well, it was made by uh, Robin DeRosa, one of my faculty members, and I think it kind of sums up my point. Please don't bring guns onto my campus. <laughs> What's your concern? Um, I'm concerned about exactly what just happened at Virginia Tech. I'm concerned that our really, really safe campus is going to be kind of demolished and just have a whole different feel about it. It's a very homely place to be, and I just don't think it should be just infected with guns all around campus. Is everyone with a gun a bad guy? No, not at all. The hunters are, are great and the people that... But we don't really feel safe talking today, so we might want to just... We're having a silent protest, so we hope that you'll respect that. Excuse me, who Would are you? Like you? Some literature? I'm recording for the Shire Free Press. Would you like some literature? Uh, sure. What is, who are you? Uh, we're, we're having a silent protest today. Thank you. Well, I was just talking to this gentleman. Would you like to give me your name? Uh, yeah, it's Josh Cooley. But That's great. And does this there. woman own you, or are you speaking for yourself today? Um, we're having a silent protest today. Okay. Well, why the change? Were you not having a silent protest earlier, and now you are? It's just early in the morning. Why no recorder? Okay. Well, have a great day. 
My name is Miller Travis. I moved to New Hampshire from Colorado, and uh, I'm here to basically protest. We are protesting a, uh, a, a an illegal weapons ban, basically, at a college. I know you can ask what what purpose a, uh, a uh, firearm would have on a college campus, but uh, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. Uh, we we saw like five cop cars just on the uh, just after entering the town limits and. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's hard to say what they're going to do. Can't predict these kind of things. You just have to trust pe peaceful people with firearms because, I mean, not everyone with a firearm is going to shoot you in the face. Okay, so shooting a gun, drawing and firing takes 20 seconds. Calling, taking out your phone, calling campus security. Hold on, don't rate me. I haven't called security yet. That's what you're saying is a better security plan than not having armed students that would be responsible with their guns if trained properly. My name is Neil, I'm from uh, Manchester, and I've uh, come up here to uh, Plymouth, it's about an hour drive north. Uh, I've got work later today, so I'm hoping to make it back in time. Uh, but I've uh, come up here to uh, kind of both cover as a uh, journalist for Free Manch, and uh, also support the uh, two protesters. This is actually my uh, old press badge. Uh, the two uh, protesters, uh, Brad and Tommy, uh, who are carrying guns onto campus today uh, in um, protest of current university policy, which may very well be illegal. I own guns to protect myself and because I, I think it's an um, interesting sport. It, 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 so, it enforces the illegal regulations through judicial contempt, so it's, other, it's what they call legislating from the bench. Uh-huh. So, so who, what oh, should these guys going. do in the case, in your argument? That what should, you the, may what have... should the government do? The government should respect individual rights, natural rights, constitutional rights, and statutory rights. And uh, people should be allowed to decide for themselves the best way to, de to defend themselves, especially on property that belongs to the people. I got an email from a University of New Hampshire Durham professor who carries a firearm every day to school, uh, excuse me, to work. And he was, you know, he basically said, I appreciate what you're doing. I'm concerned that uh, if someday I have to defend myself, that I'm going to lose my job. And these regulations, anyone who reads the law can see that this is a political subdivision of the state. It's subordinate to the New Hampshire General Court, and they're completely disregarding the law. Although the legislature is talking about enacting a new law, they don't need to because there's already one there. So this, this, court, order that, this court order that says I can't have a grenade, which is just... I mean, just silly, but this this court order is making judicial contempt out of an illegal regulation, and it's violating the New Hampshire Constitution. Plymouth State uh, University's own policy, which I read, says that they respect people's rights, uh, constitutional rights. But how can they claim to respect constitutional rights when Article 2A of the New Hampshire Constitution clearly says that people have the right to keep and bear arms? And I think it's worthwhile pointing out that if Tommy and I were still wearing uniforms from where we used to work, no one would have a problem with this. People are calling us domestic terrorists just because we're not wearing a uniform. We're people who believe in uh, the Constitution, natural law, natural rights. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We've never, we're not criminals. We've never been convicted of anything. We don't hurt people. Tommy, were you also a law enforcement officer? I was in the military. In the military. Okay. So, um, and what, um, Army. Um, it's just silly to think that good law-abiding people should be disarmed just because they're here. I mean, if I was a criminal, this is where I would come. And this, it makes me really sad that there's many students here on campus who are now uh, organizing to try to have their own rights taken away by, by going and trying to convince the legislature to pass a law. I mean, this isn't about me. I don't even own a gun. This is about you, and this is about your right to protect yourself. Are you students here? Yes. yes. Okay, and you, do you know what's going on with this situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have you been keeping track, or is this new to you today? No, we no we've gotten... We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah. Okay, and what, what's your personal feelings on this? We don't need guns. Okay. I mean, personally... We're up in the hills. What do we need guns for? Personally, I'm a Second Amendment supporter, but I think college campuses, it's particularly dangerous to, to arm students. Yeah, because these kids here go insane if they're drunk and if they're not they're drunk. Well, why should we give them a gun? Tell me, how do you feel, man? About this whole thing? Yeah, I know. I think it's rather well received. I think there was a lot of um, drama and stress created about it, and 
we weren't represented well by the university itself. Um, uh, no mention of the law enforcement background or the military background was mentioned, so um, it really did seem like there was just two crazy people wanting to tote guns around campus, and that wasn't the point. The point was to, to show that somebody open carrying a weapon is no more dangerous than somebody carrying a book or a launcher or anything else. It's just a tool. So are there any guns on campus today? Uh, there's definitely law enforcement around, and uh, they seem to be the only ones with guns. That is, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I would, I would consider any time you get to educate people about their rights to success. And so the next step you have is the court? Our court case on December 13th. Okay. And we want to win that and completely eliminate the restriction on uh, ownership of firearms by people in the public university system. And um, again, I mean, if this was Dartmouth, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be here. I mean, it's a private college; it's none of our business. This is funded by the taxpayers. It's, it's public property, so they, therefore they need to follow the rules. And there's no reason why young adults at the public university system can't be respectful firearm owners. An armed society is a polite society. So, Heike, uh, good to see you over there. But Allie, you're the one I wanted to ask the question to. A couple of gun-toting civil dissidents sounds scary. Your your thoughts? Uh, well, I've met both Brad and Tommy, and neither of them seem particular. They both seem like great people, and uh, I can imagine f from a student standpoint when you get a letter from or an email from the president of your school saying that there are going to be two strangers coming onto your school with weapons. Uh, and it's everyone knows about it, then that kind of sounds, I can imagine that that would be scary because most people, when they see weapons, if they didn't grow up with their parents or anyone they know using them for hunting or a lot of people collect guns, then they sort of, you know, grow up with seeing them on television being pulled on people. And yeah, that was my these, experience. Yeah, and these Just like, seeing them on TV. Yeah, in these kind of rare situations. I mean, com uh, compared to how often they're used to deter violence, it's pretty rare that um, it, it proportional to how, how many times someone actually is just, you know, straight up killed. And typically when that happens, it's on, you know, we always hear, there's so many stories about these campuses getting shot up and a lot of the campuses have gun bans. And, uh, you know, the, the recent one, um, there is a gun ban, so that's sort of, I would say that's responsible for why it happened. Heike, back to you. In our final cop, uh, video, Cop Block confronts law enforcement over the double standards concerning gun possession. Hi everybody, it's Adamo with CopBlock.org. Yesterday myself and several other CopBlock.org members, including Pete Ayer, headed to Plymouth, New Hampshire to cover a demonstration put on by foreign police officer Bradley Jardis. A lot of students voiced their concerns about the distractions that, that would be caused of people having firearms on their hips. A lot of other people who are pro-gun related that most would conceal carry and you wouldn't even know. This is a hard issue to get back and forth with people until this example came up. And again, someone who's of the criminal mindset is not going to announce that they're going to do something illegal. Any person can walk onto this campus at any time carrying a firearm. No one would know about it. See, are you a police officer? Are you a police officer? Yeah. You are? What agency do you work for? Grafton County Sheriff's Department. You're Grafton County Sheriff's Department? What's your name? Detective Eric James. Detective Eric James. So here's a perfect example. This is Detective Eric James. He's currently a law enforcement officer in street clothes, and he's probably carrying a firearm. And nobody knew it. This is Detective Eric James of the Grafton County Sheriff's Department. He's, he's in uh, straight clothes. For all they know, I could be carrying a gun right now, and there's nothing they can do to prove it. And that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. Pretty ironic, isn't it? An undercover officer carrying a gun with no one knowing didn't bother anything that was going on that day and was actually what Brad and Tommy wanted to do themselves, only open carry, which is actually a more deterrent because who wants to mug the guy with a gun on his hip? I'd also like people to note in this video the police presence and their lack of uh, comment 
on the double standard of why police officers are a deterrent because they carry firearms and have the ability to arrest people, but private individuals carrying fire, firearms and holding individuals accountable does not work to deter crime. Again, see these clips. I'm just uh, curious to hear if there's any, like, uh, what sort of meetings or anything's been communicated to y'all about the event going on today? Yes, we have multiple agencies working for this event today. I can't give out any information regarding the event, but I assure you that everything's being taken care of. Do you yourself have any concerns? Do you think someone has a right to carry a firearm to defend themselves? Like I said, I cannot get about any information or my opinions about this event today. Okay? Thank you. Do you guys have a, a personal opinion on someone's ability to carry here on campus? No comment on that. I see that uh, both of y'all looks like you're carrying. Is that, are there some double standards because you guys have badges? You choosing not to engage, to talk? All right, what do you think about today's events? And like open carrying in the state of New Hampshire. I don't have a comment, but thank you. you. Have a comment? All right. What's your name, sir? Uh, Sergeant Hutchins. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're open to that. Just hope to hear your thoughts on the situation today. And just want to be here, make sure everyone's having a good day. Right on. Do you have Do you have any uh, comment about the uh, couple individuals that might show up in open carry? Have you guys had any like special meetings or training in preparation? here today make sure everyone's having a good day do you think individuals should be do have the right to have a firearm to carry a firearm openly in New Hampshire here on this on this public property at Plymouth State I don't have any comment well do you guys think you guys have the right to carry firearms because you have a badge or what's the difference it's just how they set it up You know, I hope if you think you have the right to carry a firearm to defend yourself, you don't think it's your, the badge you wear grants that, that right. I mean, do you find it odd, though, that you purport to work for the community and you don't want to have a conversation about it? You guys me why, like, you carrying guns keeps people safe, but other people carrying guns doesn't? I mean, but you guys are choosing to abide by those rules. You, they only have uh, authority because people grant them that authority. So, uh, again, men, weapons on campus. It reminds me of the situation in Norway where the man, and I forget his name, it was Anders Breivik, um, I believe it was something like that, just this sort of loser monster stalking through this, um, this um, leftist political summer camp for kids dressed as a police officer, blowing people away. And um, a man like that just doesn't survive in an armed society, but, that, but, but everyone where he was was, was unarmed, um, probably disarmed. I don't know what the laws are in Norway about uh, carrying a weapon. But those people just, um, you know, in a horrific situation like that, somebody would have killed him. Mm -hmm. And um, but you come to a to a campus where people are disarmed, and just like Bradley said, that's that that's the place you pick to make your statement to to take them all down with you. Right, and it sort of brings up because um, lots of people who support gun rights are talking about self defense. But what about you know if you were walking down the street and you saw someone else being raped or robbed or something, then you know. If you had a gun, then you would be in a position where you could help that person. And if you're not allowed to carry guns, then you know th you'd be helpless. You would just have to, you know, call the police and wait for them to show up. Yeah, um, I don't think that um, that a lot of people who are pushed to the brink, they're not considering the 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 laws and what's legal or not when they go to commit murder. They um, of course not. 
Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what society is legalized murder, except unless it's the government doing it? Yeah, and I I I, I personally think that it's uh, smarter to. Well, I think that, that what it is that pushes guys to the edge is seeing the world around them where people get ahead by being ruthless. And it's... Um, it's, it's uh, Working their way around the system, sort of. And if the system makes guns illegal, then people who abide the law are not going to have guns. And that means that people who are willing to work outside the law will have guns and have an advantage over those law-abiding people. Um, certainly, I agree with that. Um, kind of what I was thinking about was... It's more sort of a deep-rooted kind of uh, the well is being poisoned by our by our democracy, because um, violence is the, the is the end. It's the the tool, the ultimate tool uh, for our democracy, and it seems like the ultimate tool. If you can harness, if you can use, if you can be the guy using the violence, then you're you're the king. Then you reign. And uh, so so people. Uh, I don't know how to say it. It just seems to poison the well, like I say. Second Amendment was originally set up to protect people from their governments. Exactly. Heike. Thank you for watching tonight. Tune in every Monday for a new episode of Free Keen TV. I'm Heike Corser, wishing you and yours a happy holiday season.